snow is all melting, but it's not fooling anybody. Winter is coming, and it's coming quick. It's getting cold this week, and there's gonna be only more and more snow, cold, and all that. So as you saw, to prepare for winter, one of the things we did was downsize our flock. We got rid of a lot of birds, uh, about half of the adult flock of egg-laying chickens, which is gonna be good so we don't have to feed them over the winter time. The next thing we have to do to start preparing for winter, we've downsized just about as much as we possibly can. Everybody who's here is staying here. We're not getting rid of any more animals. If anything, we're probably getting a couple new ones, which you'll see in future videos. We have to now get everything ready for winter. That means waterers for the animals have to be freeze-proof, clean. We don't want the barn to be gross and stinky all winter long, so we gotta make sure we set it up right. Waterers, hay feeders, a good cleaning, and making sure that the barn is ready to handle animals coming in, especially if the cows have to be in more in bad weather. So we have a ton of work to do. As we work today, I'm gonna give you little bits of tips of advice, just show you the things that we use to kind of improve your winter setup, make sure that life isn't awful on the winter. So we'll have a lot of good tips and tricks in this video about winterizing your barn and your animals, getting them all ready for the approaching long, cold winter, which is inevitable and always sad. <laughs> Let's get started. There you see our stockpile of winter equipment. We use different equipment for the winter time. A lot of these buckets are plug-in heater buckets. We have some insulated equipment, a lot of nipple drinkers. So let me show you what we use for each animal and a why. The first thing we use, this is a lot for the larger animals like the cows and the goats. We have these heated flat back buckets. These can hang flat up off the ground. Uh, I like to hang buckets because larger animals like cows and goats might knock them over. If they knock over their water, then it gets all the bedding inside. This barn is insulated, which uh, keeps the water from freezing before you even heat it. Just having an insulated barn will help. During the spring and summer and fall, we leave all the waters outside because we don't want the mess of spilled water. But for the winter time, it's just easier to bring all the waters in. These heated flat back buckets are nice. You can hang them up. You'll see I got a little clip on that guy. Hang it from the wall so it doesn't get knocked over by the goats or the cows. It is a plug-in heater. If you're inside a barn or you have an extension cord nearby, you can plug it in and that will not freeze. I have never seen it get so cold where one of these heated flat back hanging buckets actually froze. Those are awesome for goats. They're good for cows if you have a big enough one and not too many cows. We have one really big one. We're gonna use this one here for our cows. They'll go through that much water quickly, so you might wanna have a backup larger basin and I'll show you what we're gonna do for that. Uh, but just to make sure you always have something daily to fill fresh thawed water is important, especially for a dairy cow, you wanna make sure your water doesn't freeze. If your water freezes on your dairy cow, she's gonna stop producing milk. Uh, same goes for your chickens, your dairy goats, all the production animals, if their water freezes, it's gonna stop production and take longer to get back. So don't mess with water, make sure it's warm and thawed. Now I don't like using these big buckets for chickens. Chickens are more likely to roost on top of the edge and then poop into the water, get it all messy and nasty. Ducks are definitely gonna make it gross. They'll probably swim in it. So no heated buckets like that in the ducks or the chickens. Let me show you what we use for ducks and chickens. You have two options. These bell waterers, you can buy a plug-in heated bell waterer. Same idea as the buckets. The bell waterers are keeping the reserve of water clean. This here will get dirty on the inside. We're gonna be using this over here on our chick side. The chicks can have a bell waterer. They're not too messy, they're not too big, and there's no ducks over there. I hate using bell waterers because like I mentioned, ducks make stuff like this very messy. So for the ducks and big chicken side, we're going to use a heated nipple waterer. This, Premier One makes this. It's the same heated bucket with the plug-in heater in the bottom, but they poke some of these really heavy-duty chicken nipples with a little reservoir at the bottom to capture the water. This works great for ducks and chickens. 
It's not enough for ducks, we'll get to that in a second, but for just water in the coop inside purposes, see it's got nice thermal insulation on the top, you put your lid on, you rest that inside of the coop, just up on a block or something, and that'll keep your chickens and your ducks watered without the mess of a bell waterer or a heated bucket on the inside of your coop. You can also do like a DIY bucket pop your own nipples into it, and then rest this on top of a heated base. These guys right here, they're plug-in heated base. Put your nipple water on top of those. The heat rises up into the water and can keep things from thawing. If you don't, if you already have nipple water buckets set up and you don't wanna spend money on just a heated one, you can go the route of the, the heated base. I know what all you duck people are thinking. If we only have nipple waters on the inside, they have no way to clean out their beak. They have their nares. They need to put their bill in the water and splash it around and clean that out. So we do still put a waterer outside for the chickens and the ducks. Let me show you what we use and what works best. Ducks will need to rinse themselves, wash their noses out. To do that, they do need a reserve of water that they can get into. They don't need it as often as they need drinking water. And that's why what we use outside in the actual run area where they have access to throughout the whole winter, we use these rubber water trays or dishes or whatever you want to call that. These rubber ones work really well in the winter time. You get a nice durable one. You can get them from Tractor Supply. I'll have links below for all the winter equipment we use for water. So if you're interested in using some of this equipment, you'll be able to use our Amazon links, help support our show. It doesn't cost you a penny extra. These rubber ones are great. We have tried plastic buckets. We have tried metal. I prefer these rubber ones. If you're not going to go fancy heated waterers, if you're trying to save energy, these guys are really nice because you'll fill them up. They're black rubber. They absorb heat from the light of the sun, so they do a little bit better as far as staying thawed longer. They will eventually freeze, but that's okay because they're a flexible rubber. You just flip them over, stomp on the top, that busts the ice out, flip it back over and fill it. You'll have to do that every day when it's cold out, but if you don't want to pay the extra money and all that extra electricity heating all those waterers, this is a good way to do it. I prefer those to the metal route or the plastic route. And the simple reason is when you're stomping on it every day, a metal, usually those cheap metal water basins you get from Tractor Supply, eventually will start to bend, bust, and just break. The plastic gets cold and brittle. They too will eventually bust and break. Those rubber flexible ones can take a beating. You kick them with your boot, out pops the water, and they don't break, they don't get brittle. They're the best low tech option for making sure your animals have water. The downside to those is every day you're going to have to bust them out, which takes dedication, but you gotta make sure your production animals have fresh water every day, otherwise their production will slow. When you're looking for a water source in the winter time, unfortunately this is something you're gonna have to thought already of doing back in the spring, summer, or fall. Winter is not the time to install a frost-free hydrant, but it is what we use for all our water in the barns. You lift the lever, lift the lever, you get water instantly, when you lower that handle, the water drips down the pipe back into the ground so it never freezes. So these frost-free hydrants are on-demand, unfrozen water. You can't use a spigot against the barn like you can a frost-free hydrant. These work in the coldest temperatures. They're great, you just have to already have one installed, which if you don't, unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait till spring or summer to put one in. Something we're experimenting with this year, we have these self-draining kind of flexible hoses. They're one of those as seen on TV products. When you attach these to the hose, it fills up. And then when you turn it off, they self-drain. You take this stretchy, flexible, self-draining hose, you attach it to your frost-free hydrant. Turn it on, watch what happens. It slowly, fills up with water. So now we have a nice hose. We can drag out and fill our waterers, but then watch what happens when I turn that frost-free hydrant off. Now I don't know 
I haven't used these before. These are just something we're experimenting with. I don't know if they'll work on the coldest of the cold winter days, if uh, they'll be ruined by being used. But what we do have set up is here inside the barn at our frost-free hydrant, one of these stretchy self-draining hoses, and I'm using it inside of the barn to water the goats, water the chickens, water the cows. Having one hose to move your hydrant water all around the barn does speed things up, and I've already seen it outlast a regular hose. So a regular style hose we can't use this time of year. It's already gotten too brittle and frozen and filled with water. We've put all our regular hoses away, but these stretchy ones do outlast those. So they work in the semi-cold. We'll update you at the end of this winter whether or not they work through the coldest of the cold days, but they have been a nice way to extend your hose season. And as anyone of you who has animals know, being able to use a hose makes life much easier. So that's another piece of equipment we're gonna be using this winter just to make life a little better. All spring, summer, and fall, this has been our watering setup for the goats. We hang it off of a little bracket that we have here. It's nice to hang your goat waterer, keeps it up high, and the goats can't knock it over. If you just put a bucket on the ground, the goats are going to knock it over. So we're gonna keep hanging our water, but now we're gonna put a slightly bigger bucket. We have this flat back heated bucket. We're gonna just swap it out here. Oh. Ready? That, that simple, we have a heated bucket. It's hooked up, it's got that nice flat back, so it's gonna be easy for the goats to use. They're not gonna spill the water out of it. And all we have to do now is run this extension, or run this plug up. We have power right up above us inside the barn. That's the one thing you're gonna to need to use these is somewhere to plug it into. I need to get power from over there up and through this window and down. I don't want it in the doorway where the wire's gonna get banged by a sliding door and people are gonna trip over it. So, I have my extension cord plugged in in the corner there. I'm going to snake it up, over, and down. And if any of you have ever watched any of my infrastructure videos, you know how much I use these fence staples. These fence staples are so nice for instant infrastructure anywhere. These and a hammer can help you build all kinds of little things for your barn. So right now I'm just gonna thread this with some fence staples and an extension cord and we'll have our water plugged in and the goats will have good water ready to go. Whenever I'm using these fence staples to hold up infrastructure, like in this case a wire or something to clip to, I never just drive them all the way home because you might want to pull them out later, you might want to want them where they are. So I try to get them about halfway in and then I just leave them like that because you can always stick a hammer in there later and poke them out. Chickens are all set. Show us what we set up. So what we set up was a nipple waterer on the heat base, and then we have our heat hanging um, feeder. So, and this is the heat and base waterer that we talked about today with a nipple waterer on top so that they want to make a mess in the water. All right, chickens look good. The big chickens are good. The ducks have some big rubber tubs outside to wash out their nares. Let's check on the chicks. So then what we have is the Premier One water setup, the insulated top. As you can see, it's a heater waterer so that the water doesn't freeze. And then we have to sort of like tip the bucket over and do all the hard banding. So nipple waters, it's good for the chicks. They can just pick at it. They don't have to make a mess. And stand all over the edges of the water so that keeps the water cleaner. Great. And here's the cow pen. 
the cow up right We set it up a waterer. Waterer. My thought was the goats would just nibble on the wires up here, so we had to move it out of the way somehow. Water heater bucket. For the cows, it's much bigger because they go through more water. I can do water in the cows now for mommy just by sticking the holes through one of these little holes and attaching it somehow so I don't even have to hold it. So, as Daddy talked about earlier in the video, the ducks would have to wash their noses and wash their beaks from all the gunk. But the nipple otters, they wouldn't get it, get their beaks washed. washed. So what we had, as he said, the rubber waters are gutters because these aren't heated. So when they do freeze, as Daddy said, you would just flip them over, stomp on them, and you would be good to go. But you would also have to fill them. So this is a really good setup for the ducks for when they come out here and they need their beaks to be washed. We're all done? Yep. Another yep. good work day in the barn. You feel good about the setup for winter? Yeah. How about you, for the goats? Yeah. I think this is gonna help winter go real smooth. Everyone should have good fresh water constantly, good clean feed. Hopefully we can keep getting our production through the winter of at least a few eggs, yep. some milk. That's the goal? Yep. Well, what do you guys say we go and have some hot chocolate now? Yeah. And then do a snowball fight. <laughs> no! We should do fast muscle and snowball fights. You got me for hot chocolate. <laughs> snowball to the camera. Ready? No. <sighs> If you like our videos, don't forget you can support us by doing your Amazon shopping through our link. If you're in Canada, the United Kingdom, or Australia, we now have that set up over at thisishomesteady.com. Up in the menu, click on Amsteady, and it will forward you on to Amazon for your own country. And if you're in the United States, just type in amsteady.com and it will forward you there, or click on this link. We appreciate your support in helping our show through shopping through our Amazon link.